Breaking Bad is basically the Minecraft of TV shows. It's somehow immune to time. The television series featuring a bad bald guy, a good bald guy, a kinda in between bald guy, a dude who says bitch a lot, bitch, a bitch, and Saul took television by storm and even more than a decade after its conclusion, Breaking Bad is probably more apparent than it ever was during its early years of airing. We got Walt memes, muscular Gus, Dirty Mike. Put your dick away, Walter. Lovable Hank. I see more Breaking Bad now than I did when I first started watching the show. But what if I were to tell you an episode of Breaking Bad was lost in time, forever scrapped because of its disturbing and dark nature? An episode that would have completely changed the course of the show from season 2 onwards, resulting in an entirely different plot altogether. An episode that seemed so outrageous that you would never even consider it to be real if you hadn't heard it directly from the mouth of the show's creator, Vince Gilligan. Let's take a look at the really messed up, incredibly disturbing, lost episode of Breaking Bad. So if you haven't watched the show and aren't for some reason still watching this video, maybe it's because of my pretty face, then let me quickly run down the premise for you. Loving father, husband, and chemistry teacher Walter White experiences a midlife crisis once he gets diagnosed with cancer. With seemingly nothing to lose, Walt looks to take any means necessary to gather enough money to leave his family comfortable when he's gone. With his knowledge in science and chemistry, Walt decides to cook crystal meth with the help of his ex-student turned drug dealer, Jesse Pinkman. However, this character, Jesse Pinkman, a staple of the show, wasn't even supposed to make it past one season. See, no one was expecting Jesse to be as loved as he became. But cast devilishly handsome and talented Aaron Paul, and now you have a different story. His looks, his charm, his humor. It was clear very early on that killing off Aaron Paul's character would have been an absolute mistake and drastically would have impacted the viewership of the show. The chemistry, haha, <laughs> see what I did there? Between Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston was way too strong to not make the show revolve around both of them, instead of solely Brian Cranston as once intended. However, I can't help but be at least a little curious to know what would have happened given they killed off Jesse. Well, this obviously never happened, so there's no way to be 100% certain that this is exactly how it would have went down. However, Vince once gave a very detailed description about how the plot of Jesse's death was supposed to go. The Breaking Bad Insider podcast was a podcast that was created over a decade ago and featured many writers and actors from the show appearing to talk and discuss different episodes. If you're a Breaking Bad fan, then this might honestly be something that's worth checking out for you. There's a lot of interesting behind the scenes facts I would never have imagined. Like for one, see this episode of Walt puking? Well initially they got like a toilet bowl shot and you could see the puke going everywhere but apparently that was too gross for the audience so they had to scrap it. Well they already shot the footage so they couldn't go back and they had this old scrap footage where Walt was supposed to masturbate after he got his cancer diagnosis. That scene was ultimately scrapped because that's just weird so they kind of stitched it together to make it seem like Walt was puking. That's why this seems like a really odd stance to puke. <laughs> Vince you freaky bastard. Anyways on the last episode of this podcast Vince decided to discuss some scrapped ideas for how the show might have ended. Along with this he also decided to talk about the idea of killing off Jesse early on in the show. Except now he gave us an entire breakdown about how that episode was supposed to go. And believe me when I tell you this, if it wasn't directly from the lead creator's mouth, this exact person, I would never believe this to be true in any sense. It's just so outlandishly absurd and disturbing. It doesn't even match the theme of the show. I'll stop jumping around the point. Let's take a look at what Vince said. I think it was going to be that, that Jesse gets killed in season one. So this would happen like the end of season one or season two or something like this. And Walt is so filled with rage at the person, at the drug kingpin, drug dealer who kills Jesse, that he's out for re revenge. Okay, so season one is ending. They originally planned for Jesse to die. This we already know. Vince goes on to explain that this villain was ultimately scrapped in the end. However, around the end of season one, they do introduce a drug kingpin who goes by the name of Tuco Salamanca. This guy was kind of a psychopath, so he matches the description. He actually did beat one of his drug dealers to death around this time, so I want to imagine that this was to replace the death that Jesse initially was planned to undergo. They also mentioned that apparently this villain was supposed to be one of the most evil and twisted villains to ever be in Breaking Bad, which is insane thinking about the type of people that we met during the show. But instead of recreating him, they separated different attributes of him into other villains that ended up making the cut. Vince ultimately describes his character as someone the audience would want to see hurt. But Walt gets this guy and 
chloroforms them or something and installs them in some basement somewhere. Okay, now things are getting a little weird. Remember, this was during season one. This is the guy we're talking about right now. The timid, just-turned-criminal dad somehow chloroformed a drug kingpin and locked him in the basement of his suburban home. Think about what's really going on downstairs next time you decide to watch an episode of Full House. It's like shackles him into this basement and, and sets up this rifle or shotgun across the way with a tripwire attached to uh, the trigger so that this guy can opt out at any given minute. Okay, forget sitcom dad Walter White. They literally turned him into Jigsaw. Like, there's no other character that I can compare him to. Jesse, let's play the cook, 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 cook some meth. I'm just wrapping, wrapping my head around this whole scene. It's just so absurd to me. Walter White shackled this man to his basement, set up a shotgun that was rigged to a tripwire, and told the guy, pull this when you're ready to die. This guy said that. This guy right here, let's let's all be on the same page for this one. In other words, this guy's such a badass, but Walt, for some reason, Walt wants him to kill himself. So Walt, like, starts, like, working on this guy from the toes up and, like, starts, you know, lopping off bits of this guy. What? What? What, 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 what does that even mean? Working on the guy from the toes up. Like, thinking about it now, they made him worse than Jigsaw. At least it saw the dead in, like, two minutes. This guy's spending two weeks. So, like, every day, that it, you know, it... Precisely four o'clock is going to show show up. Walt's well, going to show up and take another bit off this guy. All right, I'm sorry. Let me just make sure that I got the picture painted right here. The White family is eating breakfast. You hear like a iPhone timer go off. Oh, oh, okay. One second. I gotta go handle something. And then proceeds to walk downstairs just to chop off some guy's toes. Walk back up and and starts gobbling down some bacon. And this goes on for weeks, and Walt is getting more and more disturbed. Like he because he keeps now he's he's like dedicated to like you know. So now they're, it's up to the up past the guy's knees or something. You know. Oh, <laughs> It's <laughs> just hilarious to me. Like, like I want a picture. He's just sitting on his bed with his hands in his face. Skyler, I, I don't know what to do. It's, it's, it's been like two weeks. I got ten toes, two feet, and 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 two shins in the cupboard over there. I, I don't know what to do anymore. This, this has to proven impossible. It's, I can't. And Walter Jr. Oh no, no, no way they also bring Walter Jr. into this. For those who don't know, that's Walt's son, who happens to be underage, innocent, and has cerebral palsy. Apparently, he's been dragged into Vince's twisted fantasy land as well. Walter Jr. was gonna somehow stumble into this place <laughs> oh, and come downstairs and find this, from his mind, this from his point of view, this poor guy with like no legs who is like manacled to the floor or something to the wall. And Walter Jr. being a sweet, you know, character was gonna like lean in and try to help him, you know, put some water, a bottle of water to his lips. Oh my God, I'm calling the police. And and the guy's eyelids flicker open and the guy says, who are you? And he says, you know, somehow he, the guy, the bad guy, I mean, Walt is pretty fucking bad at this point too, clearly for having done this to this guy. But this guy, this other bad guy, half a bad guy now, his eyelids flicker open and he looks at the kid and somehow he realizes that he's Walter Jr. He's Walter White's son. He's his nemesis's son. And then and only then does he pull the trip line and kill both of them. Absolutely no way this would have happened in any world. This would have made an entirely different show. By the end of season one, they wanted Walt to turn into a psychotic, jigsaw-like killer, chloroform and trap a drug kingpin into his basement, rig a shotgun booby trap that the drug kingpin could pluck to kill himself, all while if he doesn't, Walt goes to town on chopping off his toes, to ultimately end with this character plus Walt's innocent disabled son getting buckshot by a shotgun. I'm seriously not exaggerating that the show would have been entirely different if this happened. All I'm saying is thank God Aaron Paul's as good as he is. To get a little more information, I also stumbled across this Reddit post from a person who claimed to have co-wrote this episode of Breaking Bad. However, I will say that I have some doubts. It was posted on r slash creepypasta and although the user, who has since been deleted, claims this is real. I have a feeling that it's somebody who just heard Vince talk about it in this podcast and wants to feel special. Well, you know what, man? You are special. Okay, we can move on. If we are to believe this user is being truthful, this is how the episode was broken down. The intro would start with the flashback of Walt and Jesse during a chemistry class when Jesse was in high school. The user then describes that the man who killed Jesse was in fact Tuco, who did so because of a comment that Jesse made. Then everything happens the same way that Vince described, except he also mentions that the episode ends with Skyler and Walt finding the corpses of Tuco and their son. 
This would have ultimately led to Walt revealing to Skyler his illegal affairs that occurred during season one. The user also mentions that the script probably still exists somewhere. However, if so, it's likely in a random box hiding throughout Sony Pictures Television. True or not, in some alternate universe, there's a Walt who's some psychotic jigsaw-like killer who hacks off body parts that ultimately led to the death of his teenage son. Oh, this show does get very dark and depressing at times, but this, this is just so unbelievable. It's so mind-boggling to me that this was the original concept, and then they did a full 360 and changed the show entirely. Kinda makes the masturbation scene more welcome now. Ah, ah, I feel like I have a bad taste in my mouth now after reading that. Thinking about it, I might just end this video off with a funny Breaking Bad meme. <laughs>